Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where Jiang can get storytelling, shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Guang Mang, The Justice, is a 41 episode drama that's being aired on Hunan Television, also Mango TV, on the web. It is led by Zhang Xincheng, Cai Wenjing, Zhang Zhijian, Wang Zijian. This drama started production last year, June, and wrapped October. Currently, it has aired past its halfway point, and I've watched pretty much up to however many episodes they've aired, around episode 27 or 8. Based on what I've seen at this point, I really want to give it a in-between rating. Land mine slash goat mine and one goat mine. So still on the positive end, but not quite hitting one goat mine. But then not too far from it either. If I'm being kind, it's a one goat mine. First, as usual, introducing you to the story, and then we're gonna talk about good and bad. This drama is set in Shanghai, the most international and metropolitan city back in 1920s and 30s. Cheng Yizhi, played by Zhang Xincheng, is a very talented man at math who can run a lot of numbers in his head and who is very up to date to all the news about businesses and what sells, what doesn't, and how to make extra bucks. But he comes from a very humble background as an apprentice working at a small shop in Shanghai. He ran into the Wu family, who is a banker's family. His fate eventually got entangled with the lady Wu Lizi, who is the daughter of the bank manager. He also came across a very powerful, rich business, but also gangster man who has a lot of power, played by the actor Zhang Zhijian, who just happens to like him a lot. So that he climbs up a ladder in the traditional form of um, financial organizations of China, and then moving to the more sort of Western style banks and eventually become a person who did really successfully in the business of banking, supporting Chinese local industries, and at the same time, achieving his own personal happiness with the woman played by Cai Wenjin. So that would be the gist of this story. Usually I talk about story at the last point. Usually it's also the most important thing, but somehow for me, this drama's story plot-wise is not really the greatest thing that attracted me to it. So the good thing about the plot is it doesn't drag. Things are moving at a rather fast pace. So it doesn't give you the feeling of it's wasting your time and they're watering down a 20 episode drama into 40. And certain sequences of a particular event that gets set up and then gets resolved, that process is rather enjoyable. So plot wise, this drama is watchable. Then the second good thing about this drama is the leading couple's chemistry works, but not constantly. It is not something that will sell this drama. If you want to recommend it to people, probably it won't be the most interesting thing that you would use as the uh, breadcrumbs to lead people in. Sometimes the relationship just does not quite click or work. Sometimes during a particular scene, ah, you get the feeling it's coming up and it's nice. And then it goes away again. So watching Tai Wenjing and Zhang Xincheng playing a rather complicated couple through their emotional relationship development is like an on and off and on and off experience. This does quite a bit fluctuation, not ideal, but not entirely failing either. The third good thing about this drama, and I think the most important thing, is Zhang Xincheng did a really good job. I particularly want to pick him out of the uh, main cast. The older actors, you kind of expect they will do what they're supposed to do, and they're good, and it's done. Put that aside and looking at the lead. Zhang Xincheng definitely comes across stronger than every other characters that you really can think of in this drama. As an actor of his age range, among all the people that I can have an impression of, he really does come on to the top, the front line of overall a rather all well-rounded actor. He can play comedy, he can play proper serious stuff. He has a lot of skills such as dancing, even like a level of gymnastics, plus music instrument and singing because he's from a musical background. He has a rather evened out map of his abilities at different things. And in this drama, it does show he has a quite solid training background. He can deliver very accurate acting for that character at different times, different emotions, and his line delivery. 
is among the better ones of the same age range actors. Also, I'm very happy that because he's a really good singer, they did let him sing two songs for this drama, the theme song and one of the soundtrack songs when emotional and romantic story <laughs> shows up in this drama. Although I do feel the music is a little bit too contemporary for drama that's set nearly a hundred years ago. Occasionally it pulls me out because it's just too 21st century sounding, but he is a great vocalist, so not complaining about that. I have to say, it is him, his screen presence, his way of acting, and his portrayal of this character that made me want to click open the drama daily. If it wasn't for that, I probably will ditch this drama after first couple of episodes. So that leads me to talk about things that are not that good <laughs> and reason why I am very hesitating about giving it a positive rating. The first thing is, as a Mingguo setting drama, it's production quality. <laughs> I expected a little bit more from it. It does look okay, but it's barely okay. Compared to some even probably smaller budget web Mingguo setting drama, it doesn't shine in any way. The camera language, the color palette, the details of props and stuff, everything is barely passing. Republic of China's time is a very colorful time in pretty much everything. It really can be played to maximum in terms of production design. They didn't really put much effort in creating their particular version of Republic of China. There isn't a style of the look of any of those things. Also, the color palette is very <laughs> mango. Okay, I'll just call it mango. Mango has a particular type of look. On one hand, it's not the worst, but on the other, it still goes with that making people look flawless, very youthful, super brightened skin, and a overall little bit too happy color scheme. Not really suitable for this particular story. I do feel a level of grittiness and a level of desaturation probably on the yellower end for this story will be more suitable. Now we have 4K and we have crazy cameras, we have freedom of playing with colors, therefore we just make it look super, let's just say not vintage. So those are on the just technical side of things. Then the second thing that I just don't quite like is Tai Wenjing's performance. She's the female lead actress of this drama, but parts of it I do think comes from the writing. <laughs> the writing of her character is sometimes she's clever, then at other times she's literally dumb because it's written like that. You can't really 100% blame on the actress of making this role just sometimes give you those invisible question marks floating over your head when you're watching. It's like, why are you doing this? Why are you saying this? What's the point of doing that? Not entirely her fault, but her acting compared to Zhang Xincheng is weaker. Plus the not so good writing, it just makes the game of between two leads pretty much on one end. There's no back and forth, it's just one guy always serving the really good balls and then the other kind of can't quite catch it. Also, she really needs to work on her line delivery. She made some very big mistakes and didn't actually get fixed in post-production. So that is not entirely her fault too. It's definitely the drama itself. The editor, right? The producer, the director, what are you doing? Did you watch through after it's edited the 41 episodes and pick out what's problematic and get it fixed? Plus, when she's super emotional, her delivery just starts to go everywhere. You can't really quite tell what she's saying unless you look at the uh, subtitle. I think as a professional actress, you need to strike the balance between emotional but also still make your speech legible to people's ears. The third problem definitely comes to the story itself. You kind of need to turn off your brain, logical thinking, deduction, uh, reasoning, all that. Well, not fully, okay, maybe 60 to 70% turn it off to be able to flow with the story. Because if you stop and think why, then you will realize, yeah, that part doesn't make sense. That part doesn't make sense. That's just like a little bit too weird. You see our male lead jumping up the ladders of his career just at a speed that doesn't make sense. Plus, it has never been clearly explained why Zhang Zhijian's character, the big gangster and businessman boss, just has such an appreciation of this young guy. And it kind of pushes the believability of the story. He definitely has very big plot armor, a very big main character, main lead Halo over his head. In a way, it's enjoyable because you want to see a good character triumph. 
but then at times it questions whether it's earned. If it's not, then it undermines the value and the validity of his success. And by this point, past halfway, the emotional story between the male lead and the female lead is also, in my opinion, not so well written. I see the couple of stages they go through and you feel like they're just following the plan because it's written like that. Stage one, we're like this. Stage two, we're like this. Stage three, they're kind of in stage three now and then they're gonna go into stage four. It lacks the kind of energy. It lacks the spilling emotion. There's hardly any flow of that emotion. It's all being planned and taking well-calculated steps towards the final. We can see where it's it's just waving at us, like how the story is gonna end. From the audience's end, I just know all the stages that's already there, but we're just jumping through it as pre-programmed. So in this drama, the more business plot type of story doesn't really stand very strict scrutiny. And then the emotional love story end is okay, but doesn't really get my hormone working, basically. There are a couple of supporting roles story in this drama that are also okay. Wang Zijian, for example, his role. When you think carefully about the logic of that role, why he does the things he does and why he does it that way, also just doesn't quite make sense. But I guess because he's rather pleasant on screen and a lot of Chinese audiences do have a, some kind of soft spot for him due to what happened to him in real life as a stand-up comedian over the past how many years? But again, it's like the type of I enjoying his performance and presence, but then when I think carefully about why this character is the way he is, it's a level of because the scriptwriter said so. So that should conclude Avenue Exit's opinion on the drama Guangmang the Justice. Hopefully that's useful for you to decide whether you should um, start watching this Mingguo setting drama. Thank you for watching Up New X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.